Hey, Drum Lifers, how are you? And welcome to another foot technique class. Uh, I wanted to talk about something. One of our students, uh, Rachel Freeman, had asked. Um, she was having some issues with developing her flat foot. She plays mostly in the even heel position. If you don't know what even heel is, check in the foot technique foot techniques classroom, uh, I do go over flat foot, even heel, heel up, and a few other things. But what I wanted to touch base was on some of the difficulties, some of the issues you might find as you're trying to develop your foot technique. For example, flat foot, sometimes when you're trying to develop flat foot, there are positions with your shin that can either make it work or not work. Uh, if you have a weak ankle joint, you may get the fluctuation and bouncy beater off the head. So I just want to touch base on a few of those things, show you a simple exercise that you can do pretty much anywhere. This is one of those exercises I would prefer you to do behind your drum set or on a, on a kick pad or something. But you know, if you're walking down the street and you're sitting, not walking, if you're walking down the street and sit on a bench or you're eating lunch somewhere or sitting at your desk or on your couch, this is something you can practice as well. Uh, and it's going to be simple. It's just going to be uh, a, a flat foot stroke and an even heel stroke into a flat foot stroke. So let's go to the split cam for a second. Um, actually, I'll go to the full cam. So if we're just looking at my foot right now, what happens sometimes is you could see the beater up here, okay? So sometimes when our foot is, is doing a weak stroke in flat foot, see how sometimes I'm getting that double, that bounce stroke? I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to purposely get a mistake and I can't, of course. So all it is is, is, is the, the lack of control in this area. When you're playing in flat foot position, your foot does not come off the footboard and down. That's going to make things look. Even if I start out with a stroke, I lose it. So you can't have your foot come off the footboard. So if my footboard is coming up that fast, I have to learn to work with this motion here. I have to let the footboard come back up with my foot still on it. So I'm gonna tap down, come up. Down, hold, relax my foot. Down, hold, relax my foot and let the beater lift it. Once I get used to that down and holding my foot, against the beater, you know, holding uh, right here against the beater, holding my foot down. When I do this, I relax my ankle joint. I just relax my toes and my foot. I'm not doing anything with my shin right now. I just relax my foot and the beater comes off. I come back down, I relax my foot, the beater comes off. When I get used to this after days or weeks or hours of practicing it, I can then go a little faster. I could close the gap in between that, that that amount of space that I'm allowing the pressure to sit there. So instead of down, relax, down, relax, I can down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then again, hours, days, weeks practicing down, up, down, up to a metronome. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... I would prefer to do this to an eighth note as I'm counting an eighth note, but I'm only doing the quarter note. I'm doing that so I have that reference between the quarter notes. As I'm developing this, I don't want to have to one, two, three, and just try and guess it. So if I put my metronome on an eighth note count, I get that free, that free click in the middle to set me up. Beep, 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 beep right? So again, Days, weeks, months, I can shorten that space up between it again. My foot starts getting used to where that pedal control is. All right, and I'm still keeping the beater against the head, but I'm coming off of it quick. Even if I do this, you could see, and this pedal is developed, uh, is, is purposely very loose. The tension and spring on it is, is very loose. I know it looks springy and stuff, but it really isn't, and I do have the action the, the beat of pretty far back on this. See, it comes down pretty far when I just tap the pedal.
See, so that's, you know, I'm relying on that action of the pedal. Another issue you could be having is your pedal might not be adjusted properly. You don't want so much tension that you gotta uh, 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 and you also don't want it that when you take your foot off, it, it doesn't have any response. Rule of thumb, not rule of thumb, but like one, two, three, four. You should get around four good, one, two, three, four, and then it should die down. One, two, three, four, die down. One, two, three, four, die down. So that's what you want to get, and you'll get it even slower. One, two, three, see what I mean? So if you get a good pull, come down here. One, two, three, four, dies down. So that's what you want to look for. That's about the tension. You know, it's not too much, not too loose. And again, as you develop it, your foot just stays there. And we're only talking about singles right now. I don't want you to try doubles or anything else. Just get the single action going. Now, what, what happens is, look at my foot here for a second. When you see my foot in this position, you if you saw me sitting at the drum set and just playing, you're gonna assume that my shin is curved. And look, it's straight there, because I'm heel up, and that's how I'm sitting. But what happens is when you're in a flat foot position, if you have your shin too far back, like if my ankle is behind my knee, you limit the upward range motion in your ankle joint. See, I, I have no way to go up. As I bring it out, I have more flexibility and movement in my foot. If I come out even further and get an angle on my shin, a nice slight angle, I get a really good comfortable response. So my bass drum, my drum set is set up for that. If I am in flat foot and my foot is completely on the footboard, I have an angle to my shin. I'm not like this. But what happens is when I want to play heel up, instead of me lifting here and having this bad position here in the front now, when I go heel up or even heel, I bring my foot down. So I get more of that straight downward power motion in my shin. So when I'm heel up, my foot's down on the footboard and I have more of a straight here, uh, uh, a straight line with my shin. When I'm relaxed in position, my shin has a slight angle to it. So those are some really, really little um, uh, 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 things that you have to look for. And this isn't even talking about the tension or really adjusting your pedal. It's just the positioning of your foot and how you're working it. Now, the exercise I want you to do is gonna combine the even heel and the flat foot. So if I take, let's just say four notes right now, and you could do eight notes, but Four notes, if I go one, two, three, four, I'm gonna shift, one, two, three, four. But here's where everybody gets hung up. How do you come back in? So they go like this on what would be one, and then they go one, two, three, and you'd already be on the two count. So if I do this again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Down. One, two, three, four. Now with my ball of my foot and my toes, I'm gonna slide my foot back into that flat foot position and at the same time drop my heel and basically the toe to heel, the molar motion, that's the mechanic I'm using to get the one of the flat foot. One, two, three, four. Slide down and up. One, two, three, four. Slide forward and down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You could practice this, of course, eighth notes, sixteenths, whatever you want, triplets. But let's say eighth note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Again, you want to practice this to a metronome because the metronome is perfect timing. That's it. End of story, you're not perfect timing, 
The metronome is perfect timing. So if you work alongside to the metronome and get your strokes exactly on that quarter note or eighth note, whatever you're working on, wherever you're trying to land it, if you get it in sync and you're not hearing the metronome and you're on it, that is absolutely fantastic because that is insanely important development. The other aspect, of course, for the metronome, you know where you started and you can see your progress. Oh, I suck today. I started at 30 beats per minute flat foot. Look, a month later, you're up to 120 beats per minute or where, wherever you will be. But that's why you really want to use the metronome. It's key in your development. It's key for your timing, your feel, your fill development, everything. You can't develop as a drummer properly without using a metronome. Hands down, fact, okay? And again, flat foot, Make sure you really are in a good position. Make sure your pedal's not too tight and too loose. And like I said in the beginning, practice that. Do those strokes to see where your foot's coming down with your footboard. Film it so you can literally see it from the side. Set up a camera, your webcam, so you can see it live on your screen and you can make the necessary adjustments to your technique and position as you're trying to develop it, okay? I hope you find this information helpful. Again, make sure you get out there and spread the word, mydrumlife.com. You could also direct people over to my free site, freedrumcoaching.com. Again, youtube.com forward slash drummerjs, facebook.com forward slash drummerjs, Instagram, drummerjs, Twitter, at drummerjs. Everyone, have a great week. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much.